Hello everybody, you be here, and today we're going to talk about how I made some mimic treasure chests for my online store, so let's get started. The first big step in making a mimic treasure chest is picking out the treasure chest you want to decorate up. These were very much inspired by treasure chests that I made when I was working with an escape room and they had a pirate room that was launching. I did all of the set design and everything for it. And I ended up doing a charity live stream with a local charity called World Builders. And it was a really fun time, but I wanted to give a thank you gift to everybody involved in making that stream happen. And so I made some sort of piratey underwater style treasure chests. The first step that I really needed to get down was figuring out the base coat colors that I wanted for the different types of chests that I was decorating. So I made a lighter brown that was for the base of the mimics because I wanted to work with those to become darker and darker as I put more layers on. And I did a darker brown for a forest inspired treasure chest that I may also make a YouTube video about. You can also peek at them because they're on my website at the moment. Once I got my paint mixed and put in jars that are airtight, I went ahead and started figuring out the eyeballs for my mimics because these are very much inspired by the Monster Book of Monsters from the Harry Potter universe. And I really wanted to give it kind of those creepy black beady eyes. So I decided to use the porcelain clay that I played with when I was testing different air dry clays because that that clay happens to be a little more translucent and a lot smoother than all of the other clays that I have in my stash. So I rolled out a whole lot of little eyeballs. I had big eyeballs and little eyeballs for the arrangement of kind of spidery eyes I wanted to put on the mimic. And then I took those and I coated them in a black so that they just had a base coat on, knowing that they would get somewhat painted over later on, but that's what detail painting is for. Once the eyes were all prepped, I put them onto the top of each treasure chest, kind of figured out a positioning, and if I was smart about this, I would have glued them in place so that I could just work around them, but Time was of the essence, so instead I went straight to my paper mache method. You all know that I'm very into paper mache at the moment, not in a traditional sense, but in an experimental sense for the most part. And I really love to use cotton balls as a organic sort of base for any paper mache projects that I'm doing. Cotton balls definitely give a sense of fibrousness that is very common in animals and a mimic from what I understand is a kind of animal, a kind of organism. So I wanted to use cotton balls this time rather than paper mache or paper clay. And it was a really simple process, very easy to mix a batter of flour and salt and water and just go for it. I love getting messy with projects like this. After the eyes were in place and I let the paper mache dry for a couple of days so that it was dry all the way through, I took them and sculpted their teeth and gums on the inside. This is what really makes my mimics special, I think, is that the teeth and gums are hand sculpted and I used paper clay this time because the treasure chests themselves are wood and I figured that the paper clay would stick to wood better than any of the other kinds of clay. I did have to fill in gaps as the clay dried and shrunk a little bit, but this was a very seamless experience compared to what it could have been.
Before I took the mimics outside to do some airbrushing, I made sure to take the gums that were fully dried at this point and give them a base coat of red. And I also coated the entire inside of the top of the treasure chest in red so that I wouldn't have to cover that up later. However, the bottom side of the treasure chest was going to be covered up with felt later because all of them are felt lined. With base coats in place, I took these bad boys outside and did a little bit of airbrushing around the edges of the red gums, and I decided that the edges of my treasure chest were going to be black just to create a transition between the red gums and the brown outside. And then I did the base coat of brown around all of the different facets of the treasure chests. This wood was very absorbent, so it took a couple of coats, but after that I was able to take out my airbrush and do a little detail painting, which is my favorite part of doing anything. I really love to do a splatter coat before I go for the airbrush, so you see a little bit of blue splatter that's just going to add a little bit of dimension to our mimic, and I think this is a step that anybody doing this at home could really miss, but I think it adds just a little something, a little something unique. Moving on to airbrush, I did a dark brown, which was difficult to mix for me because I have like a reddish brown, but not a dark brown. So I had to kind of play with that and do a lot of that around the eyes and the edges of the treasure chest to create some depth again. And then I also went over it with a watered down black. So essentially we're looking at a gray or a black wash, but that was just to add a little bit of contrast where the piece really needed it, and I just kind of felt that out as I went. Don't forget to paint the sides with the airbrush because that can add some depth as well, which is something that I really enjoy seeing in a piece, and it also just ties the front and back of the treasure chest to the rest of it. And lastly, I used a gold airbrush paint to accentuate the bands on either side of each treasure chest and the hardware on the treasure chest, which had ended up getting a little bit splooge at this point just because of the nature of the airbrush. Once all of that had time to dry, I took everything inside and used acrylic paints to sort of clean up the little bits that were Kluji, like I said. Of, especially when it came to the gold, I didn't want there to be too much gold on any of the mimics, but I did want it to pop. For this step, I mostly used a dark brown in order to sort of blend in with the airbrushing that I did earlier. And with this step, I also cleaned up the teeth and anything else that needed a little detail zhuzh before sealing everything in. UV resin is a material that I hadn't really used before this project, and I think it might be something that I hold on to for specific uses in the future. I basically used the UV resin and I put a glove on so that I could spread it around the teeth of our Mimic. Not only does this make the Mimic's teeth look a little wet and Scoogey, but it also gives the teeth a little bit more durability so that if somebody is using this chest often, it really holds up to what they might put it through. Paper clay is somewhat brittle, and so it's really important to make sure that it is coated in something, whether that's a paint or a clear coat in the case of a UV resin, that makes it stand up to whatever your customer is going to put this item through. 
And parts that I didn't actually get on camera include putting together their tongues, which have a felt back and a fleece front. And I just used different shades of pink of each of those kinds of fabric, sewed it together, turned it inside out, put a line of stitching down the middle, and then used my acrylic paints to sort of give that tongue a little more depth. And then that got tucked underneath the felt lining that I installed on each of them using a hot glue gun. Ideally, I would have had a stapler or something like that to more professionally install that felt lining, but it is something that is very easily repaired if it does happen to come off or something like that for the customer. All in all, I love these mimic chests, and a couple of them have gone to homes that really make me happy. I hope that some people will buy them as dice jails for their naughty D&D dice, you know? So if you want one, you should definitely get one on my website, ubdraws.com. And if you'd like to see more cool projects like this, please check me out. I'm on Patreon at ubdraws. And with that, I want to say thank you for getting to the end of the video. Here's 1,000 experience points just for that because it does mean a lot. YouTube pays attention to that, and I'm really trying to get monetized on this channel now. Thank you so much to my patrons and honorary patrons alike, Mark, Nathaniel, Twyla, and Liam. You guys are rock stars. Have an amazing rest of your day, and don't forget to drink some water. And I will talk to you again soon. Peace.